in the first century were temporary. But love isn't temporary. Love never fails. That's that rich, see? Love never fails. There's going to be love in heaven. We won't have to hope in heaven because we're already in heaven. We won't have to have faith that heaven may come because we're already in heaven. Now, I'm not saying we don't have faith in heaven because we do, but understand what I mean. Love never ceases. And that's what we have in the Lord. We cannot be separated from the rich love of God in Christ Jesus. Look at Romans 8. We're just about done here. Romans 8. Verses 34 through 39. Romans 8, verse 34. I better read from verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all of us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? If he gave us his son on the cross, isn't he going to take care of us on the little things? Of course. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore it has also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conqueror. And that word more is hyper, hyper. We are hyper conquerors is what that means. Through him who loved us. For I am persuaded, Paul says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nobody can take us out of God's hand. Now we can walk out if we want to, but nobody can take us out of Jesus' hand. Nobody can take us out of the Father's hand. Jesus and the Father are one. So it's a wonderful thing... <coughs> To be a Christian. The love of Christ is our power, Paul says. For the love of Christ compels us. Our Heavenly Father provided the Savior for, the, for lost man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Romans 2, 4 says, Don't forget any of this stuff. And it teaches that it is God's rich goodness that leads us to repentance. It is God's goodness that leads us to repentance. It is the riches of God's grace that have provided an uncomplicated plan of salvation. If we will believe and confess, we can be saved. If we will believe and be baptized, we will be saved. If we repent and are baptized, every one of us, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we shall be saved. It is the riches of God's grace that has provided this salvation. You don't have to be some kind of a super mental person that, that got an IQ of about 200 or something. No. The gospel is simple, but some people have switched things around and tried to make things complicated. It's really not that complicated. The compli most complicated part of, of the plan of salvation for me is repentance. It doesn't take any effort to let somebody push, put you underwater and immerse you. Repenting is where, the, where it's really at. Am I going to follow me still, or am I going to go on following God and grow in Him? So I ask you this morning... God is rich in mercy through Jesus Christ. How rich are you? If you have any kind of need for prayer this morning, we would ask you uh, to come. We all pray for you. You don't have to tell us what it is. God knows what it is. We can pray together for you. If you have any other need. But I know
and you know don't let this world tear you down don't talk bad about yourself my mother said uh, the rest of the world will do that for you don't be haughty but know this Christians are the richest people on earth and in paradise <laughs> and all those saved in the patriarchal age and the old law if you have a need why don't you come together uh, come as we stand together sing this song I am resolved no longer to linger charmed by the world's delight things that are higher things that are nobler these have blurred my sight I will hasten to him hasten so glad and free Jesus gracious highest I will come to thee I am resolved to go to the Savior lay by my sin and strife he is the true one he is the just one he hath the words of life I will hasten to him hasten so glad and free Jesus greatest highest I will come to thee I am resolved to follow the Savior faithful and true each day heed what he saith do what he willeth he is the living way I will hasten to him hasten so glad and free Jesus greatest highest I will come to thee I am resolved to enter the kingdom leaving the paths of sin friends may oppose me foes may beset me still will I enter in I will hasten to him hasten so glad and free Jesus greatest highest I will come to thee thank you Roger for bringing the lesson appreciate you and uh, Paulette coming over this morning and and uh, bringing our lesson to us this morning always glad to have you Before we are dismissed, I wanted to read a few verses from uh, Psalms chapter 145, and then we'll have our uh, dismissal song. Just the first three verses of uh, Psalms 145. I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. The last song is 851. I guess we're having trouble with our screen. I don't know. 851. We'll sing the first verse of I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. o'clock this evening.